everyone. So this time we are in Portland, Oregon, and that is where our weekend adventure takes us. Well, right now we're actually at our first stop at Fern Kitchen, which is a farm to table plus and lunch spot. And they offer so many juice options, including this apple beef mimosa. Later on, we'll be doing another farm to table lunch experience, and we'll just be looking around to see what else we can get into. Farm to table experience that we bought through Airbnb. It's this house called Oasis for Change, and in the backyard is where they plant all of their vegetables. And they've been so kind to pre prep the vegetables for us so that we can go on this food journey. Make salad great again. We're gonna oh, make that. <laughs> <laughs> I want one. <laughs> and then we have mustards over here, you can harvest. We have that sticker bush though. There's a rubble <laughs> over here. Oh, really? Yep. Yeah. Ooh, yay. Mm. That's mm. really nice right now. So it's like harvesting a whole bunch of things basically. Okay. And have fun in here. Okay. All right. There's a bunch here. That was amazing. <laughs> We just left the farm to table experience and it was such a great event to attend. There were some Portland natives that came and it was just like the ambiance was so amazing. The people that ran the place was, are actually natives from Washington DC that fell in love with the city and moved here four months after visiting. They did such a great job at hosting us and they had like the cutest dog ever. I would totally recommend you try and find the Airbnb experience with Oasis for Change. Um, it's something run by this guy named Dove. Definitely worthwhile. We're at a musty place in Portland, the Japanese gardens. It's something so particularly beautiful about a rainy day. taking a much needed nap because today was a very long day. As I mentioned before, the farm to table was such a spectacular experience. The Japanese gardens were definitely beautiful in the rain, but our jackets made us freeze to death with like just dripping and wet. And so I didn't like it that much because the temperature was pretty low and I was freezing my balls off. And then right now we're actually getting ready to go to Teote Mescalaria, which is some place that we checked out from a Taste Made TV. And it serves these like yummy looking uh, Venezuelan arepa style foods. It's gonna be so good. don't like smoky drinks but mezcal is just that so I chose to embrace it with a teote and beyond. It has great soda so it makes it much yummier with the food notes. Wow 
this looks amazing. So good. So these are the arepitas and they're so yummy. They're like a good amount of spice. They're nice and soft on the inside. I've never had one that tastes like this. Loretta Jeans to get some handmade pies and some yummy breakfast. So I got the Monte Cristo. No, wait, I got the Monte Carlo with goat cheese and habanero sauce. Eww. These biscuits are the bomb. What they have? An omelet? So this Monte Carlo sandwich is like the perfect balance of like a nice and sweet habanero sauce contrasted by the goat cheese that's sliced with it. No, I totally overate at Loretta Jeans. It was just so damn good. The biscuits. The biscuits. But especially that blueberry rhubarb pie that we got it was magical. And yet we're still gonna go get some donuts because obviously we didn't eat enough. The Voodoo Donuts place and there was a long ass line and our actually we asked our uber driver about how popular that place is and she said that it was actually overrated and it's a very touristy spot where they actually like outsource their donuts and only really decorate them with like cool designs which still you know Instagrammable and stuff like that but so instead she recommended Blue Star Donuts and that's where we got these yummy donuts Row and we're checking out a couple of distillery places. The first one being Eastside Distilling. Welcome to Eastside Distilling. Um, before we get started, there's a few things that I'd like to tell you about us. And they also want me to tell you that I'll be your spirit guide. I'll <laughs> <laughs> you be your spirit guide for this fight. So then I have the time. So. <laughs> um, First, Eastside Distilling originally opened in 2008 as a rum distillery in this very room. <laughs> and then we grew, so we had to move. Now we're in Milwaukee across the street from the OLCC. Our very first product was the Silver Rum. It's made with blackstrap molasses, like most Puerto Rican rums, where your uh, Jamaican rums are made with uh, sugar. Okay. This is also the base for the other two runs here, the spice room and the coffee. The coffee room is what we'll be tasting today. Your east side flight, which all of you are having, is gonna be vodka, the coffee rum, the Burnside blended bourbon, the Mary and Berry whiskey, and the 91 gin. This is the way way coffee room. <laughs> this is our number one seller in the store, priced at 1990. Oh, wow, it tastes really good. I have a one of those. 60 pounds of nine and a bunch of five year old whiskey. Okay. This is apparently gin for gin haters, and it has like so many botanical flavors in it. It does have that light juniper taste, but it's not too bad. And I, t I do taste the pepper. But in terms of like, I think maybe it kind of smells a little bit like lavender, which is supposed to be another one of the notes in it. So yeah, but it's, it's pretty good. It's definitely very light. We're at the next distillery. 
Distillery. This one is called Straight Away. It's one of the newer ones on Distillery Row. And they offer a play of cocktails crafted perfectly for the taste. their flight here like they came with a snack for every single one of these, these yummy cocktail samples I tried liking it. <laughs> yeah, traditionally it's equal parts gin, campari, sweet vermouth. Uh -huh. We're using Amaro, which is still a bitter liqueur, but it's just going to be scaled back a little bit yeah. the bitterness. So I like to call this an approachable Yesterday's shenanigans knocked us on our ass and we didn't end up doing anything last night But it was so much fun and we only got to spend two days in Portland, but it was so great My favorite part was definitely checking out the straightaway distillery. What was your favorite part Scott? Uh, I'd say the straightaway distillery or any of the distilleries you'll name. Yeah. yeah, yeah, they were a lot of fun They were I even tried sneaking a bottle from straightaway that was for I think like a Linus um, gin drink and they confiscated it but at least I try. Anyways, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to hit that like button and definitely subscribe because I always take forever to post my vlogs and I will eventually post them. Till next time.